Why? What? You. What about me? P. Now you're getting a little too personal. Hi, and welcome to Crafts by Two. I'm George. And I'm Ken. That's cool. In this video, we're doing a follow-up to our Notched Garland. I talk about some of the challenging characters, like the K. A lot of people had questions about how to handle the opening and different shapes. Plus, I show you another technique using a font that has a shadow layer already to make a little bit more distinction for your letters in your garland. Cool. More options for garland. Yep. And didn't you use the new design space 2.0? 2.0. Yeah, I did. And things are just a little bit different with the user interface. So part of this video is me talking about what I had to do a little bit differently. For using design space 2.0. So Ken, Show us how you did it. Okay. Here we are in Design Space 2.0. So not only am I going to show you some of the problem letters, I'm going to show you how things look a little bit different when you're doing notched letters in Design Space 2.0. I've already laid out a number of pieces to work with. A K, because people were wondering how to handle the open parts. The P and the W. The P because things are off-center. And the W because of the notch in the center there. And then the Y, I'm gonna show you bringing in the notch on the top, as well as bringing a tab in. Maybe if you're starting with something that started with a Y and you want the tab at the beginning. Now I'm not gonna show you every single character, but these will give you a basic idea of how to handle the challenges with different letters. So for the K, you'll want to line this up in the center and you'll notice with the new design space, it's kind of hard to see where you're lining things up with these smaller pieces. So what I do is kind of, instead of moving the smaller shape, I move the larger shape. And again, you have this plus to kind of judge where the middle of the letter is. And you want to balance things, keeping it on the center line of the letter. That way things will hang appropriately as you're stringing things together. So with that lined up, and that's a pretty good position, maybe a little bit tighter there on the edge, then I can hold down shift, select the smaller one, hold down shift, and select the larger one, and slice. And that progress bar is one of the new features of Design Space 2.0, so it lets you know how long your slice is going to take but I don't need that extra part anymore, so I can delete it. And now I bring in my notch, and again, I wanna use, let the smaller piece stay, and then move my larger piece to visually line things up. So with that in place, click on the smaller piece, then the larger piece, holding shift, and slice. And there you go. Now for the tab on the bottom, it's going to be very similar. So I have the tab here. And then I just need to visually use that plus as a guide to center things. Now, this tab is one and a half inches. And I kind of want to keep this one and a half inches between each letter. When it's right on the bottom, I get the full one and a half inch for the most part when I build the tab. So to keep this length consistent when I'm actually doing it in the middle, I just need to judge how much more of a tab to add. So lining it up, I can kind of scroll this over 
to the side if I need to. So lining it up kind of appropriately. It looks like I need about half an inch more. So I can click on my tab, switch over to edit, unlock the proportions because I don't want to change both the height and the width. I want to just change the height. And now I can make this two inches. So now, for example, using this P, if I kind of line these up, now these are pretty much the same length, so I'll have the same length between letters. And there's no guaranteed formula, it's going to depend upon the font you're using, so you just need to kind of use the ruler as a gauge, just as I did here. So let me get these out of the way. So get that in place. Lining it up so they just cross, and I'm using this plus as kind of a guide to let me know it's centered. Then I can bring this over. That looks good. So now I can select both, or all three pieces, switch back to layers, and weld. So there you go, there's the K set up for your notched garland. So let's come down here to the P. And the challenge with the P is one, we have to extend the length of the tab, but also it's kind of off center because of the way the P itself is shaped. So I'm going to put it in the center there. I've already put the notch in because that's pretty straightforward using the center on the flat edge of the letter. So with the P, looks like I'm probably going to need about maybe 1.1 1 .1 inch more, 1.2. So that would be 2.7. Oops, need to make sure I unlock. So 2.7. So this will give me that consistent length between the letters for spacing as I notch everything together. So I can come over here and weld. So that looks a little odd. So one suggestion could be using markers and possibly putting in a little bit of a color here to differentiate from the main piece of paper down, or you can cut another strip. So if I undo, I didn't need to select that. And before I weld these, if I duplicate this, then I come back here and weld these again. So, for example, say I was doing this out of red paper. For this, I might make the strip a darker color, just so it kind of fades in the background. Oops, and they're layered a little funny. Let's select this and bring it to the front. So we might want to shave a little bit off of this height-wise, so maybe 2.65. Yeah, that looks good. So that way it differentiates the tab that you're using. You could do these in black, or maybe if you were hanging these on a white wall, you could even put white here to kind of have it blend into the wall instead. So again, it's very similar here for the W, where I'd be putting this in the center there, 
And again, that looks almost like I need another 1.2 inches. So I'm going to unlock, make that 2.7. And then I'd be able to weld these together. Well, that could be lined up a little bit better. <laughs> and it bounced right back. That one's frustrating me. So what you can do is instead of welding all three at once, do one weld. Oops, and I didn't line it up here. There's a little extra space. So I undo and bring that down just a little lower and weld. Well, still not good enough. Now, instead of trying to mess with it with those big little buttons on the side, I can line that up and then weld that piece in separately. So again, it's up to you. Maybe this W is enough to tell, especially if you're putting a word together. It's kind of obvious that might be a W instead of some weird Y-shaped <laughs> piece. But you can still use that same trick of putting that extra color piece over the tab if you want to help give it some visual separation. And here's the Y. And I'm going to do two different approaches here. One is the notch, because people seemed a little concerned about where to put the notch for a Y. So I'm just lining it up, still using that center, and then oops, slicing first. I don't want to mess with the layers tab, so drag and slice. So there's the Y. Now one thing to keep in mind is you're going to have some extra distance here, for example, for the tab, so that's going to be a lot tighter. So if I knew I was doing something where this was coming into a Y, I'll want to extend the tab here. So that looks to be, I kind of visually line that up. And what I'm doing here is this is where this is going to notch here. So I'm going to kind of line the top of this circle to the top of this circle. And this is just to judge the distance. So that's close. So this, I'd say, I'd probably add an inch to the tab coming off of a letter. So let me do that quickly with this extra Y. So if I was coming off of this, and I know there's not many names that have two Ys in them, but this is just an example. So if I was doing this, this is going to be very short compared to normal letters where it's notched in the top. So I would extend this by an extra inch, because that's how it looked visually before. And that way the tab coming off here gives me that consistent spacing between my letters. So I'm just going to undo a bit. That's close enough. So coming into the top of a Y, maybe I'm starting a word that starts with the Y. I would just visually line things up. And 
And again, it looks like I probably need a whole extra inch to have that inch and a half between my letters. So this is unlocked already. So if I do two, now that's longer. Oops, once again, I didn't do it quite overlapping. So I undid, and then welding again. And there you go. So this way I'd have a nice tab at the beginning of the name to help bring that down. Another way to help differentiate your letters is using a font that already has a shadow built in. I'm using Don Juan here, and there's a shadow already available for the font. So what you can do is do the tabs and notches, doing it kind of in a mix of the top layer and the shadow layer. And I'll show you. It's going to be a little bit more work, but it may be the effect that will help you make a stellar project. So I've already typed in my text. I need to... I already showed the shadow layer, but I'm going to ungroup, and then I need to ungroup each one again, the regular letters and the shadow letters. If we're doing Ken, let me just kind of move all this stuff over. I'm going to have the shadow and then the letter, and this is just going to be a little straight tab at the top to hang it with, and then the notch tab coming off the bottom to notch into the next letter. So in this case, I don't have to duplicate all of these. First I'll duplicate a notch for the bottom, and then I just need a tab for the top. And I'm putting all the tabs onto just the shadow layer. So again, I'm using the same technique. So now the center, if I center this, it's going to look a little odd here. So I'm going to extend this. And this looks about half an inch to me. So I'm going to click on that tab, unlock, and give that two inches. Oh, not quite enough. Really, I can make this two and a quarter. And since they stayed in place, I know things are kind of where they need to be. So now I can weld. And the same over here. So getting this centered. using that plus to let me know I've kind of got that lined up correctly. So again, this looks like almost another inch or an inch and a half. Is it a whole nother piece? Almost. Oops. So I'm going to do an extra one and a quarter, so that would be one part 2.75. Then I can bring in that knob on the bottom. And then weld. So now, oops, brought it to the front, send this back. When I'm done, I'll be able to put it together something like that. 
So maybe a lighter color, or sorry, a darker color for this back piece. And then for the front, a brighter color. So they really stand out. With the E, I'm going to need a notch on the top, and because I have the two pieces here, I'll have to put the notch in the same place on both letters. Now I need to replicate this, so an easy kind of way, just put this extra circle in place, kind of eyeball it, get this in the back. I'm just dragging just a little bit. Now this circle is going to be closer to the edge here, but you're going to have two layers here to strengthen it. So I'm not too worried about this one being too fine. So now I can choose the smaller circle, the letter, and slice. Get rid of that extra piece. Bring down my notch. And this will be pretty much in the same place because we're centering it, so I don't have to worry too much about centering it here. And slice. <laughs> now for the tab, I know because I've been dragging things around, kind of a bit of a shell game, that that's the lower layer. It's the larger piece. So the tab only needs to go on to the lower piece. So I'm just lining these up. Selecting them all, and weld. So again, I can choose the darker color for the bottom and the brighter color for the top. And welding brings it to the front, so I gotta send this to the back. So that's how those are gonna work out. So there we go. Using the background layers, I still have some nice distinct letters, and I've got the tab at the top for the start of Ken, then the notch tab going to the notch on the E, which I cut through both layers, then just the tab coming off the bottom layer, and then my final letter of the N. I'm going to cut this, because I cut George, I need a Ken. It looked kind of easy. It is. The notch garland technique is really easy, and it's fun. I noticed no George this time. You already had a George. I could. You could always use another George. Yeah, I know. If you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining, give us a thumbs up. And comment below if you have a question or just a comment. We love to read your comments. And if you made a garland, send us your photos, and we'd like to feature them on our website. We're all over the internet. So check the description for links to us on Pinterest and Instagram and more. Yep. Before you go, though, don't forget you can subscribe to our videos if you don't already. Just click on the icon up here. They wouldn't leave yet. I haven't done the thing I do. So, until next Tuesday, or probably sooner, we'll talk to you later. Bye! Bye! I was going to start from, plus I showed you oh. another technique. Okay, go ahead. For using design...
So if you like this, no. Just a comment. We love to read. <laughs> it's fundamental. <laughs>